If you look around my office, you might realize I have kind of a love for dark, twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark, twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. You ever wonder where Cuphead came from? Swing You Sinners was released in 1930. It's one of those classic dark Fleischer cartoons and it's really starting to grow a following. Let's take a look. Now when I started this show, a lot of people were saying, man, you might as well just call this the Fleischer Show because he has so many dark cartoons. But keep in mind, that wasn't all he did. In fact, the dark cartoons were kind of, uh, I don't want to say a rarity, but he did more of the standard ones like uh, Popeye or Betty Boob, which also have dark episodes, as you've seen on this show. But uh, there's more friendly ones, you know, ones that aren't quite as uh, cryptic. And Bimbo is one of the characters that existed in this kind of Betty Boop uh, universe. I believe he came before Betty Boop. In fact, one of his girlfriends was a dog that looked exactly like Betty Boop. And then they said that was a little weird. So they just made her a human. <laughs> immediately look at these backgrounds. I mean, this is black and white, and it is really taking advantage of the fact that it's black and white. You can get so many great shades just on the fence there. And, and look at that sky. I mean, that's like something out of Peanuts, all the different blotches and brush strokes. A lot of people see black and white as very limiting, but you're not, you're not seeing the world that can be opened up to you with it, though, if you honestly see it like that. Of course, there's phenomenal things that can be done with color, too, but I mean, look at this. Look how detailed and gorgeous those backgrounds are. Once again, Fleischer would experiment a lot with uh, his animation style. Like, I love this when he's getting in a fight with the chicken. The background spins. Now, you don't see that in cartoons back then. You don't even really see it in cartoons today, but because there is such freedom in the story and the style, uh, you can get away with something like that, and you can see how it comes across. And it's, it's a funny idea, and it looks pretty surreal. So this is back in the day when story was not the most important thing in cartoons, not to say there weren't cartoons with stories, especially with uh, Mickey Mouse and like we said before, uh, Popeye. Uh, but then you have tunes like this where just the art of the animation was enough because animation was still seen as uh, kind of this amazing thing. So you have something very basic like Bimbo's chasing a chicken. He comes across a cop and then he stumbles into a graveyard. And that's essentially it. The graveyard comes alive and sings a song and, and it ends there. And yes, there's not much story there, but where cartoons have tried nowadays to really be taken seriously, to show there can be a three-act structure, to show there can really be character, adult themes, like all this amazing stuff, uh, there's something to be said about these kind of cartoons as well, because it's not trying to... It's not trying to tell a story, it's trying to be a work of art. The same way you can look at a painting and not say, well, what's the story? What's the beginning, middle, and end? No, it, it's just a feeling. It's this emotion or idea captured in this artwork. And it's the same thing here. You're obviously going to get fear out of this dread, misery. There's not a story around it, or there is just a very loose story. Uh, but when you're feeling really terrified or afraid, especially as a child, this might be some of the weird imagery that pops in your head if you really let your mind go. It's a way of confronting sort of this dark side that everybody has, but we try to put away because it isn't polite, and cartoons like this are saying, nah, have fun with it, make jokes around it. That's why I love cartoons like this. <laughs> And again, look at these backgrounds. I mean, you can't get imagery like that in color. And for a character whose body is mostly black to still stand out against that, I mean, that that's good artistry. And of course, here's where it gets really fun. He stumbles into a graveyard. The door literally eats the key. Again, it's very much getting across just this doom and gloom atmosphere where the atmosphere literally eats up reality. And I think that's just an amazing freedom that's allowed when you don't have to stick to a story. Stories are amazing. I'm not dissing stories at all, but uh, there's something to be respected here too that I don't think always is. I really love this idea of Bimbo putting his head in the ground. He comes up through the grave and he has a bone on his nose, pretty much indicating he came across a dead body as he was going through that grave. So that, that's a lovely thought. 
Something that a lot of people like to bring up in the comments, by the way, and they're totally right. A lot of cartoons, especially at this time, uh, weren't just meant for children. A lot of them were meant for adults as well because this was such the spectacular art form. It was still in its early stages. And when I say something is, wow, can you believe they did that for something that's meant for kids? I really mean adults and kids because the idea was children can watch them as well. It's supposed to be like a family-friendly thing. But family-friendly didn't always mean just for kids, you know? It actually meant everybody was going to get something out of it. It was supposed to be kind of like the Pixar of animation. So... Something like this, yes, is also meant for adults, but it's supposed to be meant for kids, too. That, that's why I, I kind of love that it gets away with all this. A wonderful angle here. You don't see these kind of angles in uh, cartoons like this at the time. It, it, even with this cartoon, you'll see it's mostly straightforward people, kind of like a side-scrolling video game, just people walking left and right, maybe frontward and backward, but that has depth to it. And again, it takes it a step further because the tombstone will also rise up and talk to him. No matter where he goes, he can't get away from this. Starting to see the Cuphead influence here. <laughs> I guess the creators of Cuphead said this is one of the cartoons they took a lot of inspiration from. I mean, not just this, clearly. The darker bimbo cartoons and Betty Boop cartoons, even I think the last level of Cuphead is called Swing You Sinners, but maybe that's why this is getting uh, more attention now and more people trying to uh, seek it out. <laughs> hey, nothing gives you that right. I enjoy little ideas like this, like the grave is rumbling, then you see a figure kind of coming from the grave, but then the figure has a mouth. Like, again, it's just going that extra step. The grave's rumbling, and then you see a human form that honestly should probably have broken through the dirt by then, but, you know, it, whatever, it's going that extra step, and then goes one more step by the figure actually has a mouth. Like, that's what it was the whole time. It's not even under dirt or anything. It just is the dirt. When you almost never say no in animation, you get very strange imagery like that. And I should make it clear, I'm not saying this kind of animation is never seen, especially if you look on YouTube, there's people really experimenting with uh, expression and movement and shapes and surreal and comedy and mean-spirited comedy kind of like this too so, so it's definitely around but in terms of mainstream like this was shown in theaters uh, that you don't see as much of but but even then it, it, it peaks up every once in a while again look at Cuphead those trees are fantastic what I like is that the top of them are, are they're darker as they get higher, higher up into the night. They almost blend in with the night. So when you see them kind of waving against the moon there, sort of those stringy branches, kind of like spider legs, it just does not look pleasant. It looks very, very creepy. I don't see them all <laughs> Around here you might notice something else that this inspired, uh, Ren and Stimpy. John Kay said that this is one of the great cartoons, it really, really inspired him. These great styles are passed on and then mutated and different things are added and shifted uh, to give us something entirely new, but you can still see the influence there. <laughs> When you feel like the walls are closing in on you here, they'll literally close in on you to a point where they're squeezing you to death. I mean, that's just, you know what they're trying to get across and you can visualize it and amp it up to, you know, the maximum degree. I mean, that's, oh, this, this is a good cartoon. Gee, I wonder if that's gonna be a face. Stand up, you sinner, we got you at last. An interesting fact to keep in mind, this was done by a lot of first-time animators. This was their first job. Uh, apparently, a lot of the animators before quit. I don't know the reason, but back then, it was not an uncommon thing. Uh, there was a strike at Disney. Uh, even with Looney Tunes, Chuck Jones would say he was fired maybe five times from that job, but he just kept showing up, and they just sort of shrugged and went, okay, so there was, there was a need for animation, but it was not taken at the max seriousness all the time, especially depending on the company. But again, one of the nice things about that is with studios like Fleischer and Looney Tunes, uh, there was just this mad amount of freedom where with Disney, there was uh, much more control. There was much more a study of form. There was a study of making it look realistic, which again, is its own art form to be greatly appreciated. But on the other end of that, uh, you have stuff like this where they can just kind of do whatever they want.
wand and let their imaginations go wild. And both are these incredible art forms that really deserve to be analyzed. As you can see, as it gets deeper and deeper into becoming more and more uh, creepy and eerie, not just the characters become more distorted, but the backgrounds get more and more distorted. They start dancing with the songs. Nothing's really straight anymore. Everything's a little off and wavy. Look at the eyes on that thing. That thing is on something. <laughs> What even is that? Just give a circle, legs, and eyes. Boom, you have a character. <laughs> even the doorknob can't stay still. Everything has to be moving. <laughs> I like the telephone pole having the shadow of a cross there as well. And right there, how can that not be a boss on Cuphead? Can't you just see shooting little bullets at that thing? <laughs> and again, think back to like a Mickey Mouse cartoon, which are also, you know, phenomenal cartoons and great artistry, you know, groundbreakers, but uh, compare the faces on those to the faces here and you can see the wrinkles, you can see how stretchy they are, you can see how expressive they are. John K used to talk about pausing cartoons like Bob Clampett and uh, and this and even Ren Stimpy uh, and showing the movement in every frame and how every single time there's movement it's gonna be stretched, it's gonna be exaggerated because the philosophy is why be real? We have reality for that, you know, if you're gonna do a cartoon, make it a cartoon, go really big, do everything you can with the art form. And I really feel like this cartoon is doing everything it can at the time, and it still shows. It's still really impressive to watch. Those faces are something right out of a nightmare. You can't make any excuses. They're all about the butt slapping in this. I'm not sure if that was a thing at the time, but that does it for you. See, we're at a point now where there's not even a background. It's just black and smoke, and even Bimbo has pretty much disappeared. It's just these weird creatures coming out, making weird faces and moving very strange, and just experimenting with what you can do with shapes and movement in animation. Maybe what you would have done is you did have And there you go. I hope you learned something. <laughs> Again, not... Not at all focused on story, or maybe 1% uh, of it is focused on story. It's mainly an excuse to try something different, to experiment with moods and atmospheres, and obviously all those moods and atmospheres are very cryptic, very scary, very threatening, and fun, too. I mean, they actually do have fun with this. It's not taken too seriously. This is a great cartoon that, again, inspired a, a lot of great work today. Ren and Stimpy, Cuphead, uh, Bob Clampett, all these great cartoons. I'd be shocked if even the Disney studio wasn't inspired by this, too. So, Fleischer really, really experimented a lot. He even experiment with a more realistic style if you watch the uh, Superman cartoons. I mean, that looks entirely different from this. So, so he, this really was a studio to be uh, respected in its own right. He really was a director and producer to be respected in his own right. And he is. It's a name that we don't know as common as Disney, but anyone that knows animation does know this name, and for a good reason. Whether you want to see just an average Popeye cartoon, which are always great, or an average Betty Boop cartoon, or like a really dark, twisted one like Swing You Sinners or Bimbo's Initiation or any of these, uh, they're out there and they have so much creativity. Yeah, if you've grown up with these cartoons, these Fleischer cartoons, uh, which one's your favorite? Which one do you just watch and love to get nightmares from, man? I'd love to know. Hey everyone, if there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being very dark or twisted, leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm not really looking for movie scenes or cartoons meant for teenagers or older. I'm talking about ones meant for little kids, but still scare the shit out of you. Whether it's an old cartoon or a new cartoon, let me know what you want me to look at.